Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. I hope you had a great long holiday weekend. Glad to have you with us on this Monday morning. Great way to start a Monday morning. Joining me across town, Brittany Pacheco, who is, uh, I see you got the, the yellow memo for today, Brittany. <laughs> Yeah, Todd, as uh, as you said, before the show ran, I don't often wear yellow, but when I do, it's for up to before the man. show. <laughs> You know, Brittany, um, this, uh, I, 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 first off, I got to compliment you and Frank. I watched several of your shows. I was on a, a little break and I watched several of your shows. You guys did an outstanding job. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, big shoes to fill. Um, you know, this is not my forte, but, uh, thankfully Frank was there, uh, by my side to, uh, to help run things. And I think it went really, really, really well. So thank you so much, but I am glad to be co-hosting once again. Um, so for everyone who's joining us all this morning on Facebook Live, we really appreciate you being here today. Please be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel where we have thousands of videos at your disposal, all produced by our very own HCC TV. Hit subscribe, also hit that notification bell. And last but not least, so that we can grow our audience, be sure to share this podcast so we can get that information out there. You know, um, Brittany, here's a little trivia question for you. Do you know how many holidays and unofficial holidays we've been through since, uh, since we've been working away from the office remotely? Can you take a guess? Oh, it's, we're what, month five? So I'm pretty sure we've had about four or five holidays that we've gone through. Okay, we're gonna go through them here. So uh, first off, we took a break during spring break. Okay, that was, a, that was a break. And then during spring break, what happened then? St. Patrick's Day, that went out the window. Uh, we also had Easter and Passover, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, 4th of July. So what are we up to seven here? Seven things that we've been away from the office. Did you ever imagine we'd be gone this long? It's the longest spring break of life, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, that was the last time we were in the office was March 13th before spring break. Yeah. And that actually happened to be my brother's birthday, too. So, um, you know, uh, great job, Mike. <laughs> Well, he's getting a long birthday break. Yeah, tell him thank you for that. Brittany, we're going to be back with you in just a moment. Thanks, and once again, outstanding job over the last few weeks. Uh, we've got a few special guests joining us today. We're going to be talking about uh, the Pharmacy Technician Program at HCC Coleman College for Health Sciences. Janet Pena is joining us. Good morning, Janet. Well, your mic's off. That's okay, but we're going to be with you in just a moment. First, we're going to be uh, talking morning. with... Oh, there you are. Hey, good morning to you. We're going to be with you in a moment. But first, I want to welcome back to the show a great friend of the show, Dr. Jimmy Adams, the College Operations Officer of HCC Northeast. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Adams. Well, thank you for having me back, Todd. I'm excited to be here again. Yeah, well, it, it's such a pleasure pleasure having you on the show, and I'm making good on that on that promise. I kind of put you on the hot seat last time. Chancellor was on the show. You were the guest, and uh, you did a wonderful poem, and I, I threw it out there that we need you to host the show. So we're going to bring you back as much as possible if we okay. can. I'm ready. I'm ready. So we, you have written another piece. Uh, you've written so many pieces over the last few years and highlighted a few of them on several of our shows. But the latest one talks about the pandemic and it's got some very uh, interesting inspiration for the poem. Why don't you set it up and tell us the title of it and tell us a little bit of background about it. Okay, well, uh, this, this poem is called Lab Coat Angels. And um, my, uh, my wife has been a healthcare worker for over 30, 40 years maybe um, and she's a uh, respiratory therapy so she's right in the middle of taking care of all of these patients that come into the uh, her hospital um, you know with this virus and when I started to uh, write this piece there were maybe two million cases and now it's a uh, almost 11 million cases of coronavirus uh, and so this this is thing this changes seems like every every week uh, we're increasing cases. So uh, 
It cer and certainly has, and I know um, things have ch changed so much in the Houston area. Uh, it seemed like we were getting better in June. Things were opening up across the state, but now we're looking at a, an infection rate, I believe, around 13 percent, and they're soon saying that you know it, it could get higher, unfortunately. And healthcare workers uh, work tirelessly around the clock, and I imagine your wife's been putting in a lot of hours, extra overtime, to yeah. uh, fill in for those who may have been falling sick during this time as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I wrote this piece and it's just a tribute to uh, all of the, the healthcare workers. And uh, a lot of times all you see are these people walking around in, in lab coats <laughs> in their white lab coats. And uh, that's kind of where the name came from. Uh, and I was just inspired when I, when I see what they do and I see what she does and, and I hear the stories that she's uh, brought, brings home. Um, it just inspired me to write a few words to um, show that we appreciate them and uh, kind of what they mean to to a lot of us, you know, who see them in action. And um, we, we really don't know what, what goes on behind the scenes, but uh, we there are a lot of us out there that celebrate them. And, um, and this is kind of what that poem is all about. Well, we're looking forward to hearing it, Dr. Adams. You want to give it a go? So, yeah, so let's get started. So globally, since January 2020, health authorities have identified more than 12 million cases of coronavirus and over 500,000 deaths have been reported. In the United States, over 3 million cases of coronavirus and 130,000 deaths have been reported. COVID-19 has become our current reality. But there are warriors on the front lines of danger fighting these wars. This poem is dedicated to my wife and all the healthcare professor, professionals who put their lives on the line every day to save you and me. You are appreciated. This is titled Lab Coat Angels. Angels of mercy, watch over me. Merchants of hope and life therapy. Soldiers of sympathy march in double time. Life and death always on the line. Hands of mercy with hearts of gold. Eyes bear witness to horrors untold. Gatekeepers of wounded souls. Caretakers of lives put on hold. Stethoscopes rest on their chests. Faith and love, their bulletproof vests. Synthetic gloves cover overwashed hands. The innocent applaud these silent fans. Plastic shields their eyes. Fabric masks their pain. I have faith God will shelter and protect them from the rain. Morality, it rings so clear through eyes that show no fear. We can't imagine what they see in their quest to save you and me. Miracle workers on the front line of danger. Just another day in the life of a lab career. Thank you. Incredible, Dr. Jimmy Adams. What's your wife's first name? Uh, Yvonne. Yvonne, well, you, I want you to tell her that we appreciate what she does and all the healthcare workers out there. I mean, they're, they're working tirelessly trying to keep uh, those of us who, have a, who are ill right now, trying to keep us, uh, uh, get us better more or less and on the road to recovery. We appreciate you joining us on the show this morning. Um, this is becoming a regular thing. We're all for it. So it's just another, our <laughs> step to move you into your own show. We're sort of going to keep up on that, Dr. Hey, I'm ready, man. I got, I got plenty of work ready for you. Yeah, that sounds great. And folks, if you're watching right now, make sure you comment below and give Dr. Adams a shout out. We appreciate him being on the show and joining us. Things going well out there at Northeast. I know you're uh, uh, quarantined right now, but uh, it looks like we've had to rein back some of our operations a little bit. Yeah, we're doing good. And, uh, you know, we've reached out to the community. We're, we're working with the uh, health department. We're providing uh, some uh, testing sites. Uh, we have one at North Northwest. I mean, Northeast, and I think there are several around the, the system. Uh, we're, we're working with ba uh, Baker Ripley. They're doing drive-throughs for um, uh, food drives uh, at our North Line campus. And, uh, and so we're getting prepared, hopefully, 
to go back and allow our students to finish their labs, hopefully in, in July. Um, so we're still preparing for that. Sure. Well, Dr. Jimmy Adams, we appreciate you once again being on the show. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you all for having me. All right, we'll see you again next time. Right. And we're going to move across, uh, keeping up with our, our health care theme. We've got uh, Janet Pena from Coleman, uh, HCC Coleman Health Sciences. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, with uh, Coleman, I, I know a lot of students, because of the spring semester, had to put their clinicals on hold. Where are you guys now with that? Can you answer on that with your specific program, uh, where your students are with finishing up their spring semester before we get on to the program itself? So uh, as of right now, we were able to begin uh, one of the rotations. So the pharmacy tech program does three rotations, hospital, home care, and retail. So well, we work mostly with Walgreens and Walgreens allowed our students to return. Uh, and so that's what they're doing right now. Uh, it's a total of three weeks. Well, that must, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of students that are relieved now because they want to keep on target with their graduation date. And those clinicals are essential for them to complete the cr program, correct? Definitely, this is their last semester. Um, this group of students uh, was the group that was supposed to finish all their clinical uh, rotations in the summer. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, with what's uh, happening right now with the pandemic, um, a lot of the hospitals are not allowing uh, students. Uh, so we're lucky to be able to work with Walgreens right now. Let's talk about the pharmacy tech program. And I can imagine, uh, like all healthcare workers, people still need their medicines while they're sick or even during a pandemic. It doesn't matter if they're suffering from COVID-19 or they're a heart patient, they still need their medicines um, and that's their, they're vital for them. So your workers or the students that you train, seems like they're considered essential workers that they're gonna be needed no matter what uh, during a pandemic. Definitely, they are essential workers. Um, it's it's really their Walgreens is very happy to have the students because they are. I want to say a little bit overwhelmed. Um, so they they're out there um, happy to help uh, and happy to be uh, finishing their hours. So they're definitely making a difference out there. Janet, tell us the difference between a farm, uh, uh, the, what the pharmacy tech does as, com as a, compared to the pharmacists themselves. Well, basically the pharmacy technician does all the work. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it, uh, everything that they do has to be verified by the pharmacist. Right. So, um, you know, they, they don't have pro professional judgment as far as, uh, uh, they can fill, they can do everything except send it out without a pharmacist, uh, okay. And how long, tell me about the program itself. Is it a short-term program? Can you take it for a few months? Uh, is it a two-year program? Can you transfer on into a four-year program? How does that work? So the program, if you attend uh, as a full-time student, is three semesters. Um, you can go for just the certificate, which is a certificate level two, which means that when they finish, um, they're able to work in a hospital home care because they finish with their IV certification uh, because the program is accredited with ASHP. Uh, they can also go for their associates after they finish the certificate. Um, so that, that's basically what they get an associates or they can go for the certificate level two. Do you find some of your students continue on uh, after being a pharmacy tech for a while to move into the uh, the role of the pharmacist to go on for further their studies? I, actually, yes, uh, we have a lot of students that the reason why they want to begin the program is because they want to use it as a stepping stone. Um, because one of the requirements to apply for pharmacy school is to have so many hours worked in a pharmacy. So I, we find that the best pharmacists are those that had already worked the field as pharmacy technicians. 
That, sure, absolutely. It seems like it's a great training for a role or a career as a pharmacist. You talked about clinicals and rotations and getting a chance to work in pharmacies. It sounds like your students get a lot of hands-on training. Do you help assist them finding them jobs while they're in college? Are these paid training? How does that work? So <laughs> when they do their clinical rotations, um, that's when they're, that's their interview for a job. Okay. Okay. So, um, and they know our program, uh, the industry, uh, is very well aware of the type of training that we do. So there, there's jobs. I mean, they really want our students. And as it, it would the jobs for pharmacy techs be increasing over the next decade or so as our population ages? Definitely. Uh, we're, we're in high demand. Um, and, you know, the baby boomers, they're going to be retiring. And so they're going to need a lot more pharmacy technicians out there. How do you think COVID-19 has affected the future of your program with the need for pharmacy techs? Well, it's affected our program in many different ways. I think the most obvious one is having to teach um, online and finding ways to do simulation um, in other ways other than face-to-face. -face. So yes, it's affected us in many different ways. You brought up one other point I want to make, uh, one final question. There's a big move now to start doing the consulting online. Telemedicine is a big thing now. Um, will that affect the job future of pharmacy techs? Yes, it will. Um, I think, like we said, it's in high demand. And also the way I think we, we do our jobs is also going to change in, in very drastic ways as far as meeting with the patients and all the uh, background work that we do. Janet Pena, Program Director of the Pharmacy Technician Program at HCC Coleman, Colleges for, Coleman College for Health Sciences. Thanks for being here this morning and joining us on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You have a great day. Thank you. And we're gonna move across town to Brittany Pacheco. Brittany, good morning again. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, what a really important topics, you know, to discuss, uh, especially with what's all going on in the world today, COVID. Um, obviously, our healthcare workers are at the forefront of this pandemic. So thank you so much uh, to Dr. Adam's wife, who um, is truly a hero amongst many others, and to uh, Janet Pena for being an, an instructor with uh, with our pharmacy techs, because it is so important for everyone to be able to have access to their medications during this time, because it is really, really essential. While we're on the subject of COVID-19, Brittany, um, you know, since I, I was gone for two weeks, of course, uh, checking in with a lot of world events and everything happening here, certainly got to keep up with all the HCC news by watching this show, with uh, you and Frank, but it seems like um, uh, the city and Harris County really haven't uh, have taken a turn for the worse as far as cases being reported, people getting sick and people getting into the hospitals. Um, what's your take on that? You know, um, it's it's difficult because I know the the authorities who are making all these decisions about should we reopen or not and if it's too early or not that kind of thing um, i think we're seeing that it's going to get worse before it gets better yeah um mistakes are obviously going to be made and i think everyone is responsible for themselves for um practicing the social distancing wearing the mask you know, washing your hands, sanitizing, et cetera, uh, but not just for yourselves, but for the people around you, because you don't know if the person around you is sick or not. Um, and just out of, you know, the kindness of your heart, um, think of others and uh, protect yourself uh, for others. And hopefully if we get through this uh, with that mindset, uh, we'll be able to lower those numbers here in Houston.
You know, and, and everybody can look back in, uh, and look behind you and see everything that was done wrong and say, oh, we should have done things this way. But I think it was Dr. Nicotera who put it, put it best a few months ago when I was interviewing him. And he said, you know, Todd, this is like we're flying an airplane, but we're building it as we're flying it because we really haven't been through something like this, whether you're a, a politician, a public official, a mayor, a Harris County judge or whomever. No one's been through this before. This is new for all of us from, you know, working at home to uh, going to class if you're a student or if you're a faculty instructing online. All of this is new for us. So I think we all need to be flexible and realize that this is a learning process and we are learning as we go along with this. Absolutely, Todd. But I think following basic guidelines of wearing the mask, practicing social distancing, washing your hands, sanitizing your hands um, as often as you can, sure. um, and reducing the places that you go to unless it's absolutely necessary are going to help uh, again, bring those numbers down here in Houston. And hopefully uh, those who are currently affected by this virus, hopefully they will um, recover soon and be able to just walk away from the situation, um, you know, just better. Absolutely. You know, we, we all pray for that. There seems to be a big need still in the Houston area for testing and HCC is offering some testing sites and we want to give you an update on one of them. Uh, HCC Southeast has reopened again for COVID testing. COVID testing, that's what they've reopened for. But according to the Harris County uh, Department of Public Health website, two other HCC uh, testing sites are not currently operating. Um, let's see. Let's, oh, I'm gonna get this clarification. We've got Dr. Adams with us right now. Dr. Adams, tell me exactly what's going on at HCC Northeast. Have you guys reopened with your testing out there? Yes. We're okay, so they can go out there and test. Do they need to Do they need to register online? You have to register online uh, and get a registration number to come in for the free testing. Yeah. In which campus is that, Dr. Adams? This is at the Northeast campus at our Caldwell Hall. Uh, call okay. Building. okay, so I'm glad we have you on the show here because we want to let folks know that the HCC Northeast Campus and the HCC Southeast Campus are open now for COVID testing. And Brittany, what's the address for the Southeast Campus? So for the Southeast Campus, you are looking at 6815 Rustic Street. This is available to the public Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if we're following the same protocol that they had before, it's until 4 p.m. or until they hit capacity. So uh, appointments are not needed um, at this location, it appears. Uh, but just to be sure, please be sure to visit the Harris County Department of Public Health website for uh, confirmation on not only these locations, but if appointments are required. And also, as we've been mentioning, please be flexible when you're headed to these sites. It may be crowded out there. They're trying to handle as many people as possible. So uh, pack some patience with you when you head out there. Uh, Engineering Academy deadline extended to July 17th, and you can apply for Katie's University of Houston and HCC partnership in Engineering Academy and it's uh, opening in the fall of 2020, the inaugural class. This happens, Brittany, out in Katy, but they can email them or they can visit a certain website. What's the email address they can go to? The email is a little bit of a mouthful, but we'll be sure to post it here uh, on this podcast. It's That's the easiest way. That would be the easiest yeah. way, yes. So it's hcc.uhengr academy at hccs.edu. We have verified that, that is the correct email. Uh, I won't repeat it because I'm just not, uh, but it'll be posted here on the website, on our Facebook page. That's right. Uh, and the HCC Foundation scholarships deadlines are approaching. If you're looking for tuition assistance for the fall with well, the HCC Foundation scholarship application for 2020 through 2021, uh, it's still open right now. But now let's see, it's through July that you can uh, wait. Is it through August 31st or July? Which one, Brittany? It is through uh, August 31st. So it is currently July. I know you've been gone for a while, but we're well, in the month of July. Well, so you just said August 34th. I said 31st. 34th. 31st. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the tape later. 30. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, so we're in the month of July. So the application deadline is fast approaching, which is August 
31st. And you can you still apply. have almost two months, though, realistically. <laughs> you get uh, but you can apply now by going to hccsfoundation.org slash scholarships. And as a scholarship or former scholarship recipient, I can't tell you how important uh, this is to all of our HCC students. It's open to both our domestic and international students. So if you're interested in getting a scholarship, please head over to hccsfoundation.org slash scholarships. Okay, and how about, are we still doing the Zumba with Zoom or Zooming uh, Zumba with Zoom? Is it, have we done that yet? Has it happened? Have you it's done happened. It? Okay. It's over. Now we're back to boot camps. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we got virtual fitness class, which is always a big thing. You know, um, uh, that's happened noon to 1240 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, 7, 7 and 7, 9 this week. So you can catch some virtual fitness boot camps online through HCC, and that's happening. Uh, you can register today by emailing christian.andrews at hccs.edu. That's correct, Todd. And also we've got our MBDA virtual subs and sandwiches. Sorry, you're not gonna be able to get actual sandwiches. Uh, How can you eat a virtual sub? <laughs> beats me. Dr. Adams, you ever had a virtual sub? No, not yet. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, but go ahead, Brittany, finish that one out. I, I'm sure it cuts down on calories, though. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, it does. <laughs> but it's the MBDA virtual subs and sandwiches with Austin Commercial. So uh, the subs and sandwiches folks at HCC's Minority Business Development Association have another way to get entrepreneurs together. If you really want that sub, you might want to go out and get it before you take part in this WebEx forum. Yes. It's happening uh, Wednesday, July 15th at 1130 a.m. Check the HCC events calendar to register. Um, so if you can have, head over to our website, um, there's a calendar there, events calendar. Be sure to click the link so you can go and check out that forum. If you're an entrepreneur, this is where you need to get connected. Build your network by going to events like these. So make sure you check them out. Um, virtual info sessions, if you're enrolling for the fall, you have to attend one. And we've got them weekly through August. You can register today at hccs.edu slash information sessions. That, in that uh, email, or I should say that website address will also be in this post as well. And jobsnowhouston.org initiative is up and going strong. Brittany, you want to clarify what this initiative is for? This initiative is for fast track training so that you can get into a new career. So obviously, um, this is not a jobs fair that HCC is hosting. Again, this is fast track training that HCC is offering for the public to get their foot into a new career during this time. So it's a, pro a program to retrain and retool Houston's workforce in healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, IT, construction, and a few other areas. So if you're interested in the fast track training, I'm gonna keep you know spilling this out until we get that message out there, fast track training, head over to jobsnowhouston.org for more information. And if you want a job with HCC, well, you can go to our website and Google employment and you'll be able to find talent engagement on there. So totally different than this website, what it's out there. Um, so that about wraps things up for this show. Tomorrow, though, we've got a very special guest, which this is pretty cool. You know Raquel Sims, right? I do know Raquel. She's a lovely yeah. person. Yes, she uh, works out at our Stafford, Stafford Municipal Educational Television Station. That is our partnership with the city of Stafford. And uh, she'll be joining our show tomorrow talking about uh, what exactly is MTV, METV. Because sometimes people aren't sh didn't really know that we're in partnership with Stafford with their TV station out there. So she'll be talking with us about that uh, tomorrow on the show. And we'll also welcome HCC financial coach Danielle Scholl who will talk about our Hurricane Harvey grant for current and potential students. You know, Brittany, there's still people out there who have suffered from Hurricane Harvey and really haven't recovered. That's absolutely true, Todd. And my heart goes out to all those individuals who are still feeling the effects of Harvey. Um, so be sure to tune in tomorrow uh, for this very important segment with financial coach Daniel Shul. Uh, Daniel, so Daniel. 
to talk about the Hurricane Harvey grant um, again for our current and potential students. Um, they've got a very special event coming up and he'll tell us more about it tomorrow. So again, join us tomorrow morning on Up to the Minute at 10 a.m. And be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget about YouTube. And we hope that you stay safe out there and also remember to be kind to one another. Absolutely. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. live on Up to the Minute. Oh,